for people, they don't think that 10K is possible. And I think the moment that you understand that that's a possibility and that's available to you, things just start changing. And with you, you not only talk about 10K being a possibility, but everything beyond that. So I quickly went from, okay, 10K is possible because I'm living it, but 100K is also possible per month because I'm literally smelling it. I'm literally embracing Mm -hmm. it and I'm literally chasing after it. And I don't think that would have ever been possible if I hadn't seen you talking so freely about that with us, your students. And I think that's a game changer. So we are here with Gabby. We're going to get straight into it. Um, Gabby is one of my students and uh, she went from, I mean, she's, she's gone ahead and, and scaled her uh, e-commerce agency past 10 per month. Uh, so I'm very excited to dive into her journey. Uh, we're going to be revealing some unconventional methods that she used um, to get there. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit about augmented reality ads, which is going to be really fun, uh, which comes to show that not everyone is doing Facebook ads, right? There's a, a myriad of different services that you can uh, tap into and you can get very creative with an agency. So very excited to have you on, Gabby. How's it going? Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very excited. A little bit nervous, but excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, I, I, I want to start with where you're currently at with your agency. I'm not sure if you like mind sharing numbers, but if you could like tell the audience, because I think it's going to be a lot, you know, very valuable for a lot of people, oh, um, sure. where you're currently at in terms of like revenue, in terms of growth, et cetera, et cetera, clients. Yeah. So I think for me to disclose that, I think it's very important to kind of talk a little bit about how you changed my business and then how that led me to where I am right now. So when I, I, I started working at many agencies before, so I kind of had a great idea of how agencies operate, never liked it on the back end. Mm -hmm. And when I first started mine, I was almost operating as a freelancer. So I, I wanted to, I was doing everything. I was doing all the paid outs. I was doing all the email marketing. I was doing like everything. And obviously scaling like that was a little bit challenging because there's only so much you could do. And then I joined you and you kind of taught me these different ways of operating actually as an agency. And, you know, I started doing the methods that you find within your program and they were working, but for some reason they weren't super aligned with what, what I wanted to be doing at that point. Mm -hmm. It didn't like resonate so much with me. And I felt so many, so much resistance towards it. Um, But it led me to different paths of how, how to approach it. Right. And the different ways that I could do it. And I think that opened so many doors to where I am today, including to start running augmented reality ads. For me, it was a tricky time because it was when iOS 14 uh, privacy updates kind of Mm -hmm. launched and I was struggling so much with my clients. And I was like, okay, now I need to find a different way of how to do things and something that distinguishes me from the rest, but at the same time that gives the best results possible. So I kind of kept going. I hit the 10K mark. So I was running about 10, 10K, 11K per month. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am still today because then I started with augmented reality ads and that led me to start targeting different types of potential clients. So I am doing like an entire restructuring and just aiming towards different goals. So I think when you do that, and this is something you've taught so much, you need to like pause a second turn back and take a look at what it is that you're going to be doing, what your game plan is and how you're going to approach it. So with AR, it's a lot of, you know, uh, instructing people on what it is uh, because a lot of people don't know. So there's a lot of hesitation towards it, but once everyone starts to educate themselves in it and see how incredible the results could be, um, that's really, really changing the game for me at least. So I'm that's excited. where I am today. Yeah, but it went quickly. And this is also something that you learn with your program to expand your mind so, so much because for people, they don't think that 10K is possible. And I think the moment that you understand that that's a possibility and that's available to you, things just start changing. And with you, you not only talk about 10K being a possibility, but everything beyond that. So I quickly went from, okay, 10K is possible because I'm living it, but 100K is also possible per month because 
I'm literally smelling it. I'm literally embracing mm. it. And I'm literally chasing after it. And I don't think that would have ever been possible if I hadn't seen you talking so freely about that with us, your students. And I think that's a game changer, honestly. What, what do you think played the biggest role towards changing those uh, limiting beliefs or, or those mindset beliefs around money that you had? Um, obviously, you mentioned, you know, me just talk, talk, you know, talking openly about the fact that like 10 per month is not like a huge deal. Like anyone right. is, is capable of doing so. It's just that society leads us to believe that it's this like crazy number that you have to work like 30, 40 years for, right? Um, 12 hours a day. But are there any like other mi mindset shifts? Because Gabby here is like crazy into mindset. Like she she has, you know, really, you know, cool um, beliefs around mindset. And I'm, I'm excited to, to, to dive into those. But are there any like other mindset shifts that really help you uh, towards um, your view of, of money? Yeah, I think... Okay, important. I started charging when I first started my agency, like you get, you're going to laugh, like $300 per client, which is crazy. And I think it all started the moment that you start to believe that you're able to do just more, that just by understanding the industry and bringing value and helping your clients, you're already worth more than that. Mm -hmm. And then that resistance towards charging 1K per client or more starts to disappear. And I do think it's like a confidence game. And I do think the more experience that you gain, the more confident you become and the more comfortable you are with charging bigger retainers and profit mart and at profit sharings. So I think that's the, that, that was the biggest change for me is understanding that just by being a person that brings value in itself is worth that. And then the rest comes with, you know, being able to get client results towards clients. And, and that's something I was talking about recently and sharing in my, in my social media. It's I, we have this concept of irresistible offers having to be like this crazy great deal that you give clients around like, okay, so if I don't hit your results by two months, then I give you uh, all months free until I hit it or crazy like offers like that. And at the beginning, I thought so much that that's kind of what we had to do because that was, if you're competing with all these agencies and all these people that are trying to, to do the same thing that you, that you do. And there's a, a huge concept around that, that the, the market's saturated and all these things, yeah. but the more you understand that your irresist irresistible offer is the way that you show up and the value that you bring for being literally who you are and you're in the passion and your why, I think that is way more of an irresistible offer than anything else. And the moment that you start to believe it, the way you sell yourself, the way you, you present yourself towards your clients and prospective clients, things just start changing so much because it's no longer about, okay, let me just try to sell, sell you the service is about, look, this is what I bring to the table. And I'm confident that I am going to be your ally, that I'm going to be your accomplice, that I'm going to be the person that is going to walk hand in hand to make your dreams and my dreams mm -hmm. come true. So it's, it's literally that. Yeah. And that's a game changer in itself. Just understanding that an irresistible offer is not just yeah. about offering some crazy deal that actually decreases your value in a way because it's like why should you work for free not everything is necessarily about results if you're helping them get through mindset struggles which every entrepreneur goes through if you're being super transparent with them if you're assisting them almost 24 7 depending on obviously each person its own but for me I created a huge bond with my clients that I am definitely proud to say that my first very first client I ever signed is still with me today and I think for a an agency that just starts off, I think that's hard. And it's not because I always gave them the best results, but rather I was always like in tune with my why. And we shared that in connection. So the more you present yourself in that way, and the more you understand what your irresistible yeah. offer is. I think those you. are, well, a lot of really great points uh, to, to highlight in particular yeah. for, for viewers as well is this whole concept of like, having to have money back guarantees and, you know, crazy, crazy offers. Right. And right. I actually think, and we talk about this in the program, right? Like I, I actually think those do more harm than good for 
most entrepreneurs right. because they use that as a crutch, right? They think that their offer is just doing some money back guarantee to get the client through the door. But after they get the client through the door, they have they've put literally zero, zero thought into the process to results, right? And I always yeah. say this, right? They should be used as what they are, a little crutch in the sales process where if an objection comes up and you see that, for whatever reason, they're not, you know, finding, you know, they, they don't see the, the, the value. They have a massive resistance maybe towards that specific service because may, the previous agency burned them in the past and you haven't done a good enough job in the sales school. Maybe you can use that as a crutch and, and take those guns out when you need them. Right. But this whole yeah. concept of making those things, your offer is just so backwards, right? Like your offer should be your process to results. The fact that you're not specific companies, yeah. the fact that you're the fucking best at what you do. Right. Uh, yeah. And when you have that, you know, the, these, these sort of things, you don't really need to use them that much. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, for me, so I started venturing, um, to get a certificate in life coaching. So most specifically like transformational coach. And the reason why I did that was like, I started understanding every single call I would jump in towards a prospective client. <laughs> it turned out to be more about like all these limiting beliefs that I would find. Then that's why like a lot of things weren't working. And they, they like, there's a lot of that comes with, you know, getting results. It's not just about paid ads. You can have the best metrics like in within your ads, but then I don't know, you don't have a good automation in your email marketing. You don't have great uh, conversion rates on your website. You don't have great product pages. So there's a lot of things. And then that creates like when the client doesn't know that they put it all on like the results and the, the ads. And it's really not that because that's not going to create magic. And also if you're, if you're thinking like that, then off the bat, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think I, that's when I started understanding, like, this is on a hundred percent a mindset game. It's a hundred percent a belief game and what you believe creates. And that's just the borderline of everything. The moment that you believe that you can achieve whatever to the, to the point that you don't have any resistance is the moment things are going to start shifting for you. And those shifts may appear like I lost clients, um, fell through because of X, Y, Z, and then new clients would come without even me chasing them because they just kind of made their way to me either by referrals or random connections and random ways. And I genuinely believe it's because most of my time I spend training my mindset and understanding the value that we bring as an agency that is way different from any others because I know how a lot of others operate because I've worked there and I was like oh no like I need to be more authentic and I need the agency to reflect my values and my integrity and do things right and care about the people that I'm working with it's not all about a transaction and, and money so I, and think I think that, all of that's such a really helpful that's such a great point, right? Because a lot of people think that it's just purely about results, which uh, in turn puts so much pressure pressure on you as an agency, right? And, and oftentimes oh, yeah. this pressure prevents so many people from even starting an agency because they're like, what if I can't get my, my, my client results, right? Um, yeah. Obviously you should do your diligence. You should have like a crazy process to results. You should have an incredible team. But yeah. I think, as you said, one of the key things is understanding that the, the interpersonal side of things plays a massive role, right? Because yeah. you know this, even if you're the best media buyer, there will be months where your results don't show that, right? There will 100%. be months where you, there, there'll be, uh, you know, um, obviously uh, peaks and troughs, right? The, yes, there should be an upward trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the, the agencies that truly crush it and the agencies that have such a high retention rate like yours, right? Are the agencies that don't just purely rely on results. Yes, they have incredible um, way to get results, but right. they also rely on, you know, interpersonal uh, relationships, right? How great is the communication? How much do you connect with the founder? Have you have you done the foundational work to really build this bond up, right? Because if, if they know that you, I mean, you're inherent, in her, they see us in her part of their brand, right? And they don't just see us an agency, they see us a partner. When mm -hmm. things, you know, come down, they're going to keep you around, right? Because they know that we're in the upward trajectory. Like this whole expectation that agencies should always, always perform, it's just, it's just not realistic, right? And I think- no. One of the great things that you said is you rewire a little bit your client's brain, right? To understand that it's not just, you know, because as humans, we tend to look outwards, right? For, for responsibility. And so mm -hmm. the internal problems that the founder has, they reflect in their business in the, in, in, in the same way that like, as most humans, like we go, oh, 
you know, it's not me, right? It's it, it, I'm not the reason why I'm not getting results in life. It's like because of this and because of that, right? And we look for excuses. Yeah. And I think having an agency that you're paying is like the perfect excuse, the perfect scapegoat for any founder. They're like, oh, it's because of my marketing agency that I'm not growing, right? Whereas in reality, I think you've, you've done an amazing job at this. If you rewired their brains, right? To understand that like, this is a partnership. We're, we're in this together, but yeah. don't, don't expect me to come in and, and solve your life because no one is going to fix your life. You're going to fix your life. I'm going to come yeah. in. We're going to do this together. Uh, but at the end, but, but I'm only an addition, right? I'm not like this. I'm not going to save the day for you. Exactly. Exactly. And we, we do carry a huge burden. And I think it starts with us. Like if we put that on ourselves and we set, like I said, it, like you said, unrealistic expectations, then things are just naturally going to cr- uh, crumble down. Like as marketers, we deal with people, we deal, we deal with consumer behavior and that is always shifting and it's always changing. And the more we test different audiences, the more things we discover, the different, the type of communication. So there's a due diligence behind all of it. And because of that, you're never, it's never going to be a clear, like you said, a clear line up. Like you're going to have months that are worse than others, uh, drops, ups, downs, like the best month ever. And then a little bit down again. And that's the path to success. And it's like everything in life. Like just because you're relying on paid ass doesn't mean that things change. So even in your own life, like that's what we've experienced on your way up. Hi, ma'am. Sure. Like you had a lot of downfalls and you've spoken about these, like and it's the same way with paid ads and dealing with clients and the your ability to be able to handle those moments and being like, I got you. Like I'm in mm-hmm. this with you. Like, I also don't want you to be struggling or you be, be in this position because that hurts me too. So yeah. I am in this with you and your capacity to let them know that, but with, with, with realness, right. With, with transparency and with honesty, not fake it, but generally caring. Like yeah, generally care. care. Yeah, the moment. Yeah, exactly. The moment that they see that, they're like, "Oh, yeah, like we're doing this together." What do I do on my end? And they start becoming more of this, like you said, a partnership, and it works so wonderful. And I've seen the difference between the clients that I've let go or just kind of you know drifted from, because there weren't they weren't willing to understand that it is a process and that we are in it together. No. But the people, the clients that I do have today they are, oh my God, they're like, we're a team a hundred percent and we're equals and it's not your fault. My fault is how can we solve this together? And that's the best place you can ever be with a client. And I think the goal of any agency owner, um, or even people just dealing with clients should always be to create that bond and be genuine or just even find something that is mutual and that you can grab from to create that honesty and create that transparency and relationship because for you it might be something else for me it might be something else and that's great uh, yeah 100 uh, and at a more, more tactical uh, tactical uh, level uh, for those watching it's just, it just comes down to increasing the switching cost you know the 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 founder you know good luck finding someone that cares uh, about your business more than gabby okay. not not many people are gonna are, are gonna be at that level right um yes results can come and go but like the genuine understanding that you've got of, the, of their business, of the founder, uh, the fact that you not only look at their growth from a paid ads lens or whatever your service is at that time, uh, but yeah. a, 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 like a 360 thing, right? You give them consultations on a bunch of different aspects of the sales funnel, but also, you know, when it comes to mind, like even mindset, right? And so when you have that 360 approach, which can very much be also mindset um, and, and, you know, personal relationships, then the switching cost just goes through the roof, right? And when they think about, firing Gabriela, they, they go, oh, but then I need to not only like hire another media buyer, but also hire like a SEO agency or, uh, you know, landing page optimization agency, and then an email marketing agency, but also like a, a life coach. Right. Uh, right. and I think, yeah. I think that, that, that makes a, a huge difference. Let, let me answer this because you have a very unique perspective because you've worked at an agency, right. Before yeah. starting your agency, right. Obviously mm-hmm. we do things very different uh, here Many. and you know, <laughs> you do things very differently as well. Uh, so what are the main differences? What are the main like ways that agencies just completely mess up traditional just average agencies? What are the main? I feel like I can go on on this. I feel like I can go on on this. I, first of all, the client relation goes to someone that is not super high level. So most times that you're working like on a, 
ongoing basis, you're working with account executives or just, you know, lower level, not the seniors because they're dealing with whatever it is that they were dealing with. But I think that's super interesting because with us, they're dealing with us and they're dealing with senior media buyers, experts that have been at this for years and years and years. So they directly have that con contact and connection. And again, it's all about building that partnership. Whereas in other agencies, that is just non-existent. Like no one truly cares about the, the client. If that check is coming in, that's all that matters, honestly. And mm -hmm. the the way the system works in within the agencies, it doesn't like it doesn't matter if something's a priority. Like you have 10 other clients that have other priorities, and you only have so many employees that could fulfill those needs of the priorities. So you, you have things like working around 24 seven, you have people working until eight, nine, 10 PM. No one cares about not only the employees, but the clients, because then you're not actually turning anything around on time because mm -hmm. everyone's a priority. If everyone's a priority, nobody's a priority. And that was like the biggest thing for me. I just remember it being not human enough for me, if that makes sense, because for me, it's all about that human connection. And again, that genuineness of working together. It's a partnership. You're working to build their dreams. This is their baby. This is their, their everything. They put their sweat, effort, time, everything they have resources into it. And then you just go ahead and just take a check and disappear and kind of do your thing on the back end. How? No, I don't believe in that. So I, I, I remember feeling a lot of frustration and I'm never going to forget one time I was working um, with the the client on December 24th, and he was like, how hasn't this been published? Like, where's the music for the supermarkets? We were dealing with like supermarkets at that point and we we're doing a revamping. And I was like trying to figure it out, but the seniors weren't even answering. So it's like, I was dealing with things that the, the, the people that handled that close the client should be dealing with and no one even cared. So that's when I realized like, this is not something that is, I'm not being in, in, I'm not having integrity with myself by being part of this. And if I, and I remember always saying like, whenever I do have an agency, if I ever have an agency at that point, didn't really believe it, but um, I am definitely going to do di things differently because it's sharing dreams and it's life. So it shouldn't be just a transaction that no one really cares about. Then you transition into being a, a freelancer, right? Let's talk a little bit about that phase uh, because you just want full expose mode on, on the agency industry, but a lot of, a lot of um, truth bombs there, right? The fact that like, yeah. you know, there's not that human connection. It's just a transaction, right? So then you started your uh, freelancing gig. Let's talk a little bit about the limitations of that business model, uh, especially in comparison to, you know, the way you structure things now. Yeah, I mean... When you're a freelancer, you also need to do things to grow the business. So the business, so when you're an agency owner, most of your job is to oversee, kind of strategize together with, you know, the, the people that work with you and um, close clients. So deal with anything internal in the agency, make sure everything's running well, blah, blah, blah. With freelancers, you not only had to do that, but then you also had to give the results, manage the clients do the reportings. Um, so it was almost like a one man show. And there was only so much you could do because if you also, I don't know if something would happen with the, um, with the client, for example, um, and they needed, I don't know, help with email marketing or help with X or YZ as a, as a, the way I like to do things, I'd like to help my clients and go one step further than probably any other would because I honestly do care about their success. And I was like, okay, maybe they can't afford X, Y, Z. So I'll just like pop in and help. And then, but I also had to deal with my other clients. So there was only so much I could do. And I think that that, again, that wasn't the vision for that I had for myself and the way I wanted to do things, because I do want to go that extra mile for my clients. So I figured like the only way was the high note way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, like I, I, I was like almost like, um, 
yeah, one man show. And when you're kind of doing everything, you're not doing everything the best way possible. So I feel like people shine in different areas. And I finally am working in my area that lights up my soul, I guess you would say, which is really like looking after the people that I work with and forming those connections. And even if I don't end up closing clients, I get in so many prospective client calls and the value that I'm able to give and like the way that they start perceiving things. And then they're like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to work on that and come back to you. And they end up maybe not coming back to me, but they definitely refer me. So it's pretty cool. And I think that is where I shine most. And I think everyone mm -hmm. should do what they are came here to do. And um, that's when I, I figured that I wasn't going to go all that far just being a freelancer because I'm not a media buyer. I am just a strategist yeah. client lover. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I, like, I think, a, I think your genuineness coach, also, yeah. Honestly. I think Strategy. your genuineness also like comes through, right? And, and your empathy on, on these sales goals. And a lot of people ask, you know, often ask me, I'm sure they ask you, like, how do you, you know, how do you cultivate this passion? Like, how do you come across in, in such a like genuine way? Um, yeah. You generally, like, you generally feel it, right? Like it's, it, it, there's only so much you can fake. I mean, you can fake body language. You can fake all these things on sales goals, right? But like, there is a level at, there is a level of like, empathy and genuineness and, and also a level of passion that you you have to feel at least a, 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 about a, a specific aspect of the agency model right it doesn't okay. have to be the whole thing like there are no. there are things about the agency model that i don't like the same way that uh, you know um, i'm sure you have things that you don't like doing but there should be something that lights lights you up right so find that thing and then find a way to make sure that you you know you, you actually cultivate that doing um and, and and that shines through doing those sales calls because yeah. more than a sales call, it's just a, a conversation. And, and if you can have a, a conversation where they walk away inspired, where they walk away lit up, right? Where they walk away hyped, right? And where they walk away, hopefully as a client, that's going to serve you way, way better. A hundred percent. Like my most recent call was with this um, beauty brand. And I um, spoke with the VP. That was our first initial call. And immediately after the call he was like okay no he stopped it's so funny he he put his pen down he was taking notes he was like okay no um I need you to speak to the entire team like if you're willing can we please schedule another call it's probably going to be a one hour call but I want like the founder this this other person to be there I want you to say everything that you're saying you were just like opening so many possibilities that we didn't even consider and I was like what? Of course. Yes. Like I am so excited to do that. So honestly, when, when you're just aligned and like you said, and, and I think that point is super important is like, it doesn't have to be all about the agency. And if what, what you just spoke was nothing about results was everything about what you love about it, but it was nothing related to results. So I think first of all, is that focus and unrealistic focus that it's all about that. And it really isn't, obviously it's part of it because that's how you keep clients long-term honestly mm -hmm. but it's also not the main thing and then the second thing is like it doesn't matter what it is that you do what matters is that you understand why you do it so my why can be done in multiple ways it just happens to be through an agency you know what I mean yeah. so my why is to help people build the type of lives that they want to live through whether it's their own business or whether it's you know getting rid of limiting beliefs that's why I started uh, getting my certificate in life coaching, because mm -hmm. I understand how these two can integrate. And it's how I kind of release this yeah. calling, I guess you would say. So just a vehicle, right? It's just a vehicle. Yeah, it's uh, just and, I a vehicle. and I feel like a lot of people also miss that point where they overthink way too much about life. I mean, this is just a whole, a whole nother conversation, right? But they, they go, okay, I want to be a life coach, right? Or I want to be this type of person. And they go, but an agency right now is not going to serve me. Well, it, it, it's not that you're going to become this agency owner for the rest of your existence. It's just a vehicle, right? right? I, I, I hear a lot of people talk about like how they want to build maybe a tech, you know, a tech company, right? In yeah. 10 years, very different to, to, to your case, right? But, uh, and, and they go, how would an, an agency serve me? Like I, and, I, and I go, well, what do you need right now? Right? Yeah. And they may go, I need cash, right? Because that's going to be the number one thing that's going to change my life. And it's going to allow me to maybe, you know, quit my job and invest a lot more time into what I'm passionate about, which may be tech for you, maybe, you know, life coaching, whatever it is. Right. And so yeah. if that's, if that's the number one thing, then you just need a vehicle, right? There are people that love the agency model, but 
for a lot of people, it's also a vehicle. And I think that's a great conversation and, and that's a great topic that you brought up, which is like not overthinking about, not overthinking way too much about, you know, wh- whether an agency is your calling or whether, you know, this yeah. agency is going to be like the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your assistance. Because as, chances are like in 20 years, 30 years, we never know. Maybe you, maybe right. you do still run an agency, but maybe this was the, the, you know, the thing that got you to the next stone, you know, the I next agree. step system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's all about, it's, we are human beings that we're always evolving. So it's always about listening to that. And I talk a lot about how intuition and connecting with what, what your true desires are can actually propel you to fulfill a lot of more goals than you would have otherwise. So that's also something for me that I think I started to defer from maybe how business is done or Mm -hmm. the, the, the stereotype of how business or being an entrepreneur is done. And I call it stereotype because I know that there's a lot of movements around it and a lot of um, crashing those beliefs of how it should be and kind of making just free. It's funny because as entrepreneurs, we we fall into a how-to and the whole idea for you to be an entrepreneur is to do it your way. And the fact is, is that we're not longer doing it our way. We're looking for those like blueprints and guides and all these Mm. things. And the thing is like, if that, it may, it may align with you and you might find it, oh my God, this is my blueprint It's working fantastic. That's awesome for you. But for other people, that's just not the way it should be done. Mm. And the more you hear that, the more it takes you through a path. Like for me, I launched a free course and that was my most authentic way of kind of like bringing value to people and being like, you know what? I want to educate and I want people to know about augmented reality ads and what I can do and blah, blah, blah. It aligns with my mission. This is what I'm going to do. And after that, then I'm going to send out, like connect with people and kind of let them know about this free course that is available instead of just like playing on cold pitching people. So I think the more you find your way through inspired action and you take those steps, you're going to get so much further than following a how-to guide to do something that is not even authentic to you. So I think also understanding that and just listening to that is going to propel you so much more to your success than anything else, really. Yeah, well, when I think I think those are, again, great points. And when you act in alignment with uh, your essence and, and uh, you make decisions a lot based on intuition, those are going to be good decisions, right? I think, as you said, there's an element of planning when you're an entrepreneur, but over planning can really hurt you, right? Yeah. Because then you're not really listening to, to your intuition that much, right? And, and this is, for a lot of people, it may sound kind of like woo woo, but at the end of the day, if you're if you're over planning, right, you're very rigid in in in, yeah. in your plan of the future, right. And so, uh, going back to that example of people overthinking whether they need to step into the agency model, the the their intuition may may be telling them like chances are if they're considering it, their intuition may be telling them like hey do it, of right. Course. But then their mind their, their mind gets involved and they're like over over planning, overthinking, right? Trying to control the future way too much. Whereas you just need to get started, start building momentum. And then this thing will need to lead to the other thing, right? That's how success really works at the end of the day, right? You buy a bunch of lottery tickets, you get in action, you get in motion. And then one thing leads to the other. You just show yeah. up in the best way possible. And then that fucking thing takes you to the next thing. And, and yeah. you just keep evolving, right? But when you sit and ponder and overthink, and, and you know, is this aligned with my passion, all this shit? Yeah. It's just overthinking, just get in motion, do, right? Do more. <laughs> And like you say, it's, it's not necessarily about the agency, but what that, what that door opens you to. So the moment you step into, okay, so this is what I want to do, or this is what I feel like it's my calling right now, then you do that. And then it turns out to be something completely different. That's great. That's the whole Mm. freaking point. That's the whole process of it. And I think, yeah, people should just, just do it. Like Nike says, gosh. (laughs) <laughs> Look, I think I think one of the 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 reasons why I want one one of the things that I wanted to do with the program, right, is not just have this pond where everyone's drinking from the same water, right? Yeah. Because that well just dries up, and that's that's like what most programs are about, right? They tell mm-hmm. people exactly what to do because that has worked for them, right? Whereas mm-hmm. you're much better off following a blueprint that is obviously you know like a proven framework, but then not robbing people of adding their own creativity and add their, adding their own spin to it. Because if you rob people of, of their own creativity, it, you make them robots. And I see that a lot in not only the agency space, but also like entrepreneurship and, okay. and online coaching in general, right? Yeah. People are just completely robots of creativity. They're literally saying things like the uh, head coach, the, the founder, the guru saying, them, right? Whereas you may be 
you may have way different strengths. That, that is why I also think the personalization element is massive, right? Because then, you know, a coach can help you guide and, and guide you towards finding your strengths and finding the ways you can position yourself, right? Because it can be very different than me. It's going to be very different than someone else, right? Yes, there's a proven framework, but at the end of the day, if you, if you don't add your own spin to it, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice because you've, you've got strengths that I don't, you've got weaknesses that I don't, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's massive. And there, there's no one way to achieve success. And if anything I want you to like the listeners to leave from is that like, there's no one single way, like you can achieve the same desire, the same level that you're wanting to chase after the same 10 K by doing something completely different than Jaime or than me or than anybody else. And that's like the whole point. And I, that's what I love about your course. I took a lot of courses before yours and yours was the only one that would consistently throughout showing your ways say like i hope this like this is meant to help you and inspire you to kind of do it your own way to adopt it and make it your own you know and it wasn't yeah. like a this is how it should be and this is how it is and follow I, I don't i don't want robots gabby i don't want robots yeah. you know leaders create leaders um and that, that you know and and that that is the true way that you can have impact it's not about having like a million robots right it's having like a bunch of people that can can impact their you know can, can impact the world in, in their own way right because you're right. not you're never going to be able to impact the world you know i'm never going to be able to impact the world the way you're going to be able to impact the world sure. right it's right. just you know different scales different things different avenues right and I, I think i think there's a lot of power in that let me ask you this when you hit the pillow right at night like what are some of the non-negotiables some of the things that you must have done or some of the things that you must have that must have happened during your day or maybe your state of mind that you know you need to have to like feel satisfied and fulfilled uh by your day because i think the reason why is this right it's because i think your views on success um are going to are going to be very helpful for those who can actually listen and take it because i think especially when you get when you start making money um you can go down a very dark rabbit hole of never being satisfied and just being pretty miserable and yeah. i went through a little bit of a phase uh, with that so i want to i want to get your take on like how you view success how you uh detach from like uh, you, the money that i make is my worth and, and all this all this good stuff oh i think that's an ongoing process to be honest because obviously you know it's the easiest way to measure things the way we are kind of taught to understand it success equals money and um for me it's very and I'm going to say for me, it's very personal because for me, success or the way I've learned to view it is the more, and again, it goes kind of back to the same thing, but the more aligned and the more confident I am in what it is that I'm doing. So I come from a lot of like personal struggles. And now when I see myself like in the mirror every day, like I have a job that I absolutely love that I wake up every morning. And even if I have, because I do have them every single day, there's a problem to be fixed. There's something. Mm -hmm. And if you are an entrepreneur, agency owner, whatever it is, like, you know, like there's always some uh, fire to put out. And even when that is like, I'm so genuinely grateful for what I have that almost nothing else really matters because like, look, I'm, I'm being able to afford, you know, living alone in Miami, which is a crazy expensive city at this moment, you know, like I'm being, I have a bed, I paid for my furniture, like things like that do help because it's a sense of like, I'm building something that is my own. And that in itself is something to be completely proud of because not everyone does it. And then I think obviously grounding yourself in that. And again, in your why, and just the more you align yourself with what you truly believe is right and with who you are and the more you work on yourself look like maybe you were a pessimist and now you're like super positive about life i think that's a huge win and a huge success and the mm -hmm. more you remind yourself of like everything that you've overcome whether it is in professional your personal life it all feeds together so that has really shaped my sense of success and the more successful i feel the more success i create in the sense of wealth and i think mm -hmm. I think it all starts there. It's all, all starts with, and you've heard it time and time again, like being grateful for what you have, but also being grateful for all the things that you've overcome. And that's why they say like, celebrate the small wins because the small wins will bring your confidence up and that will feed your ways of feeling successful. 
Um, and so for me, it's really like looking myself in the mirror every day and just being like, I'm so in love with you. I'm so proud of you. And the road ahead is going to be amazing. And just understanding that is full of possibilities. And that in itself is amazing, like so successful. You know what I mean? Like the fact that you can create off your mind out of nowhere, millions of possibilities, like I can make money in Mykonos on a yacht if I want to, or I can, you know, make money from my small apartment. That's awesome. That in itself, the fact that you are able to think that is success in itself, because the more you believe it, the more your thoughts feed into that, the more success and money will come your way. And that's just a, a natural effect consequence of feeling successful already. Did you ever feel like you were going to make 10 per month? Like I said, that was a, that, that was a, <laughs> that was a initial struggle. The more I kind of, I think that was my number one thing. The more I viewed my small wins, I was like, Oh my God, mm -hmm. like I did this. I never thought I could do that. So maybe I can do this and, Oh, I did it. And I never thought I could do that. So I can do this other thing. So I think it was a buildup and I think it's a process, but I definitely, the moment I started to believe it, it happened in like three months. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fast. It was quick. So it was um, so fast, but it was a work to get there because if you do have limiting beliefs about your abilities and your confidence is not there, it's never going to, yeah. it's all energetic. It's never going to bring you much, you know? And if it does, it's going to crumble very quick because the more you grow, the more things kind of fall down so they can pick back up greater mm -hmm. and bigger. And yeah, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. And what do you think needs to happen for you to get to hundred k per month? Like, what version of, you know, what what changes need to happen with Gabby? Mm -hmm. Maybe certain limiting beliefs that you're currently holding on to, or yeah. certain mindset uh, mindset um, paradigms. Anything that you think needs to happen, or maybe at a technical tactical level. Yeah, for me, it was less about technical and tactical because I, it was more about building the confidence needed that to say mm. like, I can do that. And so personally, first of all, I worked a lot on my, I was so scared of charging. Like I was genuinely, whenever I would be on a prospective client call. And for me, those kind of came always natural and I'm a pretty good at, I guess, closing it. But then the moment that it came down to saying the number that I wanted to charge, I, I sensed so much resistance and I had a number and then I would immediately say a lesser number. Mm -hmm. So I think that was so interesting for me. So I worked a lot in my money mindset and understanding, okay, so first of all, understanding where do you have resistance? I think the moment that you identify your resistance in terms of business is, and work on those is the moment that you're going to start like getting to the next level and next level and next level. Um, so for me, it was, that one was the biggest resistance. Like I was charging 300. That's crazy. And then I remember when it came down to charging a thousand, I was almost like forcing myself to, and if you're forcing yourself, it's also not helpful because you're not believing it. And I started building myself up to like, okay, why is it that I'm not believing it? Like, what is it about me that I don't think I deserve, or I'm worth those a thousand. And then I started deconstructing those beliefs and reconstructing new ones and telling myself new stories that backed up by facts because yeah. some brains just function with facts too. It was like, okay, look, Gabby, you've worked at many, many agencies. You've, you know, you've generated results. You've closed a lot of clients. You've, you know, like I started kind of like feeding myself, like the things that I needed to prove myself that I was able to, uh, again, it was a process, but the moment I started doing like the resistant lifted. And now that I'm chasing after that hundred K per month, per month, a hundred K per month. And I know it sounds like a huge jump, but for me, there's no resistance at all, but because I focus so much on working that, that I immediately did like a huge jump that feels definitely very easy for me. And so I think that's the key, you know, I think that's where it all lies because then you're presenting yourself in the call and being like, yeah, I'm worth this. So now I'm work. I already sense like in my latest, one of my latest calls, I was pitching AR and I, you know, that package is like my most expensive one. And I had to throw like a number that I've never in my life thrown. And it was 5k more 
And then I, I immediately did the same thing that I would do with the 1k. I, I went from my number to 5k less and I threw the 5k less. And I was like, oh, why did I do that? But see, now I understand that's something I have to work on resistance yeah. right there. But the moment that I do, I already know kind of like how I work and how to reframe my mindset. So I know the moment that I do that, I'll be super confident in being like, yeah, I'm worth that. Yeah. Plain and simple. You just have and to then, be ruthless about, about the things that, you know, spotting the things that being very self-conscious, which is really not easy, right? Very, very self-aware, self-conscious of, of, um, of the, the things that are slowing you down and just being ruthless, attacking them uh, every single day, right? Because that, that's when progress gets really fun and gets very, very fast uh, yeah. when you just attack the things that are holding you, you back. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes a lot of accountability, responsibility, and maturity to being able to say like, yes, I suck at this, or yes, I am believing this, and it is my fault. Because a lot of times we don't assume accountability, and we, we're quickly able to just kind of blame everyone else for like our downfalls. And I think part of that is really like being able to say like, okay, no, that comes from me. Cause maybe you blame your parents or your sister or your whoever, your friends. And it's like, no, that's the decision I made. I chose to believe that. Now, what am I choosing to believe? Yeah. So. I think, I think that's one of the key things that differentiates people that tr truly make it and the people that don't, right. The people that truly make it, they're just obsessive about like, getting a no, right? They, they see a no as a sign of progress because then they can attack the thing that got them that no, right? And yeah. they can go, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake ever again. Cool. Now we can, yeah. you know, keep evolving. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you never, like imagine going through life without any obstacles or any, you wouldn't, you wouldn't shape yourself up, right? You wouldn't grow at all. And I think, I think when you Have make that, that very basic like mindset shift where, where, where you understand that resistance, right? And obstacles actually shape you into a much better person and more obstacles that you face in life the quicker and the faster and the stronger you're going to become, uh, getting no's, it becomes really fun. Like I remember when I, I kind of made that um, mindset shift at the, at the start of my journey, getting a no in a sales call was actually fun because I was like, okay, you know, I would analyze that sales call and I would just kind of spot the things that got them to say no or just ghost me or whatever it is. And then yeah. I just, I, you know, I, I got I got quick. I, I got good very, very quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, with that, I just want to add that, the more you detach your value to your results and to these no's and to rejection, the more you'll accomplish because what, what would happen to me, and I, I remember it very clearly, is that every time that I would have a bad month with a client or you know not as great as the month before or whatever it may be, um, or, or even no's at the beginning, um, I, I, I took that as a, as a sense of, Oh, okay, they're rejecting me. And mm -hmm. the moment that you're able to like separate both is also the moment that you're more able to analyze in a more critical and just less emotional way. And I think that is key to be able to assume those responsibilities and accountabilities to start that change that needs to happen within you. 100%. Um, I don't want to leave this interview without talking a little bit about uh, augmented reality ads. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, let's so let, let's get into, let's get into, um, first of all, kind of like a very basic overview for people watching. What are AR ads? Yes. So in 2019, Facebook incorporated what is called a spark ads hub. And it's basically that you're able to create augmented reality effects. And the most simple version of that are filters. So obviously we've all played with those Snapchat, Facebook, like, uh, even TikTok now. Uh, so that is in itself augmented reality. And so what a lot of people don't know is that Facebook has the ability for those to become experiences on ads. So that is honestly really it. And there's a lot of different ways that you can create augmented reality ads. The most basic one are filters. Um, then you have others that are front end camera that basically you can see the product or well, in our case, we're e-commerce agency. So in my case is like products, but you can really see whatever it is that you want to create, whether it's like an experience, maybe you create like an entire environment or whatever it may be, but in our case, it's product. So there's a lot of ways that you can experience the product in your own environment and almost like real life. So it starts building this idea of a, a, a new way of shopping online because you're almost as if you're at the store and that's really what you want 
to create. So there's a lot of less returns, there's increased conversions, there's more brand loyalty, um, even cart values start to increase because people are more sure of what they're purchasing is legit and they love the experience in itself. And if anything, and I'm, you know, you can stop me whenever, but if anything we've learned is that because of COVID so many, the consumer behavior has changed so much and even huge tech like Apple, Microsoft, um, um, well, Apple, Microsoft, and all the, the big tech brands, kind of forgot for some reason, Facebook, obviously, um, these all like started noticing that what they projected to be a seven year adoption started to happen now. And that's why TikTok started to boom and like all these things. And, and I think that part of what they crave is more um, intimate experiences and more immersive experiences. And that's what AR offers. Um, and then alongside that with the iOS limitations, AR builds that gap back up. So I think it's funny how so many people are leaving Facebook and it's like, mm -hmm. why should you leave something that is barely even, you barely even exploded all its capabilities, you know? Um, because with AR, it builds a huge layer for that and the results that you can have. Have you seen any... Know. No, no, that, that was a great, that was a great overview. Uh, have you seen any specific niches within the e-com space that, um, that really can benefit from AR ads? So honestly, or just any, I, any, like every single, any, uh, yes, every single anything, niche? anything. It's crazy how that is a limitation towards creativity. And if you can yeah. create, then anything yeah. is the sky's the limit. But what, like what would you say is like the niche that's most active in, in your eyes that you've seen really get into it? I'm guessing so, cosmetics is probably big because I mean, they're just massive always. Yeah, from fashion, cosmetics uh, is huge. Cosmetics is huge. Uh, I would say fashion apparel is one of the ones that will more quickly adopt this. Um, the try-on capabilities are improving each time the technology. So I think the fact that you can try like a piece of clothing or a purse mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. I think that's crazy in itself. And as the technology advances, I'm sure the fashion and apparel industry is going to be the one to benefit most and the ones that's going to more quickly adopt this. Um, I guess my, my last question or one of my last questions is, it's a weird one, right? But, uh, so I, I was just in Miami with the team. We should have actually done this in person. Um, uh, well, I wasn't in Miami when you, oh, came you were, yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, why I didn't yeah, pick you up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why Miami? Why live in Miami? I'm just curious. Me? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Honestly, it's not, it's not what it used to be. I think I was more in love with the old Miami than I mm. am with this one. Um, mostly because I'm from Venezuela and yeah. I moved to Boston to study there. And then my family left Venezuela because of everything. And they landed in Miami and it was like, you know, kind of like the family reuniting because we were all over the place, Argentina, Panama, Venezuela, Boston, so mm -hmm. New York. So it was kind of our way to be back together. I guess. <laughs> it's like home, essentially. Home away from home, if you would say. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the home in the US. Um, yeah. Do you, would you like consider like moving anywhere else? Because I mean, you can move anywhere, so... I yeah, I, I would a hundred percent. I would a hundred percent. I can't wait until the moment I was going to do it this summer, but I want to definitely be a little bit of a digital nomad for some time and mm -hmm. explore where my kind yeah. of heart is and yeah, see how the living is at other places. Cause I've traveled quite a bit, but one thing is tourism. Another thing is living. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. cause, and this is really the final question. Cause what, what does the uh, routine of a, a six-figure agency owner look like uh, in Miami? Like, what 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 does it look like? What do you prioritize apart from? Because obviously, it's very apparent that it's not just for you. It's not just about the work, right? It's about uh, yeah. evolving as a person, evolving yes. um, dimensionally, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, yeah, like cultivating, you know. Oh, what does what, it? What, what do you prioritize? I love this question. Um, I am super religious with my like steps, I guess, or my routine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, this is something that I kind of train myself, but every morning, as soon as I open my eyes, I definitely start listening to all the things I'm grateful for and just getting myself pumped for all the possibilities that this day could be. I ask in my, in my case, God to kind of surprise me and 
whatever it is that my intention for that day is, I make sure to kind of bring it for for forward to be able to be like, okay, my intention today is X, Y, Z. Um, sometimes it, it looks very different. Sometimes it's just being more compassionate with myself. And sometimes it's like crushing it with my clients, you know, it could mm. be just anything. And then, oh my God, I have this whole playlist about like gratefulness and um, like mindset training. Uh, so I put that on while like just getting dressed, getting pumped for the gym, go to the gym, go to Equinox. And then I come back, uh, do my matcha, do my, my things okay. <laughs> always by listening to there a podcast or yes. a book. And yeah, uh, I like to listen to books and um, then I get cranking. I think one of the biggest things that I've finally was able to release from myself and I think and everyone should do is like, don't stick to the nine to five if that doesn't work for you. Like for me, I rather start earlier. So I kind of try to wake up six, 6.30, sometimes earlier, sometimes a little bit later, but I like to wake at work, start working earlier and then just like leave earlier as well, mm -hmm. if I'm able to. So I think I just kind of also tailor that part towards like my needs and also not being afraid to be like, oh, you know, today I'll just do a half day because I can, you know, and yeah, maybe yeah. treat my mindset a little bit more or whatever it may be. And then I just journal a lot at night. Okay. <laughs> and it's study. important to, to not make your business. Day. Oh yeah, right. Because you're starting for the lack of. It's yeah. important to make, not make your business your job, right? A hundred percent. When you when you do that, you fall out of out of love for for the business very very quickly. A hundred percent. Yeah. So that's kind of what what my life looks like a little bit. All right. Nice. Um, I think that's a, a good way to uh to wrap this up, Gabby. I wanna I wanna acknowledge you for first of all sharing your time with us. Um, but sharing the the great energy that you brought here and and that you you're attacking life with. Um it's you. i'll tell you what uh and, and this is one of the reasons why i told you this uh why i wanted to have you on because you have a very different approach and uh i think this type of energy this type of mindset this type of like take on success life in general can can bring a lot of light to the to a space that is uh very much ego driven very much <laughs> very dark in in many ways um so okay. that's why i wanted to have you on and i appreciate you for uh, making time and, and sharing your insights of course thank you so much i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast <laughs> any uh any final comments any final uh, you want to leave the audience with you don't have to but i'm, I'm sure um, you have some something to share i i guess the only thing i would i would share it all really just start with you and start crafting new beliefs and new stories that will actually build you up instead of tear you down all right I think that's what matters most. all right that is that for this uh interview thank you gabby and uh yeah, we'll speak soon. Okay. Bye-bye. So there you have it, the interview with Gabby and how she grew to 11K per month in literally three months with her agency. If you've enjoyed the interview, go ahead and smash the like button. Helps us out with the algorithm. And if you want to check out free trainings that I'm not posting anywhere else, go ahead and check out the free Facebook mastermind that I've got linked below. It's an incredible community full of like-minded individuals. And I'm going live on that community pretty much every single day with live trainings on, on how to start and grow a social media marketing agency. So if you want to get access to that, go ahead, check out the link in the description. There's going to be a few questions that you have to fill out uh, in that form. And if you're a good fit, we'll let you in. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.